What I want to show you today is the difference between buying oil-filled shocks that have an incredibly stiff spring versus actually making a shock that has the proper amount of dampening with the proper amount of spring rate. It's not as difficult as it seems. And one of the key aspects to making any kind of a shock spring, um, this one is actually pretty good. It's also for a larger RC car. One of the most important things to realize is that when you're winding your spring, you've got to have the right size diameter. Believe it or not, this spring was made with this diameter rod. Now, I have a number of different rods of different thicknesses that I utilize in order to make some of my springs. One of the things I do with this, I actually make gun springs with this, with various pieces, is you want to have a rod that has a hole in it that spins and something else that's a carrier that holds the piece while you're spinning it. What I want to show you today is how to make one of those springs and or make more of them. A good rule of thumb with the proper amount a spring rate versus shock is when there is like a half a second lag before it goes up to the top versus a lot of the shocks we have today that are way too stiff. So let's get to it and I'll show you how to do that. Now in this instance what I used and found an aluminum rod that works perfectly for the diameter for these particular shocks. Now again, these are not very expensive shocks, but they do have the capacity to be able to be oil filled, and I can change the rate of the dampening by the thickness of the oil. These I'm actually using quite a high viscosity oil. Some of these other ones, like this one, are as a better shock, has better dampening system, I do not need to have as much. The important thing to remember is that the diameter of your wire, this happens to be music wire, that for these particular springs here I used 29 thousandths, 0 0.029 or 0.737 millimeters of piano wire. You can get numerous different sizes. I've made springs with 22 thousandths, I've made another springs with 26 thousandths, a lot of different spring wire weights you can utilize. What I've noticed is 29,000 is a pretty good range for most of the springs that I've had to make, other than making gunsmith springs. So what you really want to do is, again, is you need to make sure that you have a solid base. Everything is clamped down so nothing moves. It be very solid, other than my desk moving here. Clamping in. the rod, and again, having some sort of system that the rod can actually float into. I'm particularly using this lathe with another three-jaw chuck on this side, just enough to give me some ability to rotate. Now, there are lathes out there that will actually rotate this slowly. would love to have one, but I don't. My lathe is very specific at a very uh, rather high rate of speed, so I would have to spin it too quickly. Let's go to the next step, and I will cut my wire. In this instance, this wire, music wire, comes on a roll, and it has a very specific curve to it. Now we're going to utilize that curve. The items that I use are just a normal clipper. Clip the wire off, that off to the side. Now, 
I don't know if you can see, but there's a small hole that I drill in through the rod that goes completely through the rod. I thread this through the hole, give myself plenty of extra. Go through a little bit more, back around into the other hole. I don't know if you can see that or not. I take my regular needle nose pliers and I just bend the end over. So basically I have it set up in a way. Now it's very important not to bend the wire. Don't sit here and bend it and everything. Keep the same curve. This curve is very important. What I do is I slowly rotate it on downward and I will show you fast forward a little bit into here I will show you what I do I wrap the end, wrap it through, I make a knot once again I take and I bend the tip sorry that was my phone I let the wire go so that I get the proper curve again. This curve is very important to be able to mimic the same direction as the wire itself. Now this next step, one of the most important things to recognize is that you want your wire to be very, very taut. I'm going to try to place it over onto that side, keeping it very taut. You can see how much I'm pulling my bench. And you start the wind. You do not ever let go of the pressure that's on that spring wire, on the music wire. I'm pulling quite a lot, an equal pressure all the way through. Now what I'm doing is I'm doing at least three or even four winds before I go off to about a 10 or 15 degree angle. Slowly keep winding. And if you notice on my rod, I actually have a black line. What that black line does is that tells me my length, where I'm going to end the spring. Now this looks easy, but the really important thing is keeping constant pressure and constant angle of your music wire and constant depth between each wind. I used to count, but I don't bother doing that anymore. Once I get just about to the line, I'm still keeping a lot of pressure on the wire. I just start to end the face of the spring. And again, I will wind at least three to four times, sometimes more, to finish off the spring. You will be cutting this off anyway. Once I have it, Clip it. I release my bar. And there you have a spring. And I will just literally clip it off my rod and then I will go in two three winds and I'll just clip off the clip off the excess and let's see I'll even do a little bit more here on this one and on this one I'll go about right to there 
and there you have a spring. Annealing is the final process in spring making. Gunsmiths have been using this process for many, many years. What it is, is you literally heat the spring. You can do it in your regular oven at 450 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. Then you take it and you put it in cold water. What it does is it hardens the spring steel itself back. If I were to take this spring that I just did and made and compressed it all the way down, I would lose at least 30% of the height of this spring. After I anneal it, if I do this, I lose between 5 and 10% of the actual height of the spring. So annealing is an incredibly crucial part to creating a spring. Not only that, it also helps the spring to have a little bit more stiffness. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe and give me comments below. You have an awesome holiday and you take care. Bye-bye.